going down very slowly. I know. I'll show you how to cope with a walk. You're a regular walking encyclopedia. Dad heads for the lab to find out something interesting about cooking rice. And my friends find out that rice is nice. Today on Fine Food Frenzy, we're having an oriental chopstick party. And you're invited. chopstick party. And I, for one, can't wait to dig in. What was that? The Oriental Etiquette Gong. The what? The Oriental Etiquette Gong. Today, we're going to learn how to eat the Oriental way. That is, if we want to keep our hearing. Yeah, but <laughs> chopsticks are tricky. I, I mean, how are we going to learn how to use these before your friends show up? I guess we'll just have to learn fast. Anyway, I read that doing things quickly is a big part of oriental cooking. I guess we're gonna find out. Yeah, we'll find out when we show you how to make sumo stir fry. Kung fu rice. Oh, and guess what we're having for dessert? It's a fruit that I bet you've never tasted. You give up? It's lychee fruit. What now? What did I do? You're not supposed to point with your chopsticks. It's considered rude. Oh, well, uh, I tell you what, why don't you go get the lychee fruit and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Good idea. Where in the world am I going to find lychee fruit? The lychees are now grown in many countries. They have been cultivated in China for more than 2,000 years. I know we don't grow lychees in the jungle, but they do grow on trees, and lychee trees grow very high. Hmm. I wonder if the grumbler has some connections. Hey, grumbler, do you have any lychee fruit up there? <laughs> You can also get them at the grocery store, but don't buy them if they're cracked. Aren't they cool? In China, people think they bring good luck, which we're going to need if we're going to use chopsticks by party time. China isn't the only country that appreciates lychee fruit. In Thailand, where many exotic fruits are grown, the harvest is a time to celebrate. Everyone comes out to watch the Miss Lychee Parade. Floats in the parade are decorated with, you guessed it, lychee fruit. Have you got everything? Seems like I do. Mushrooms, bamboo shoots, onions, and of course, red peppers. Mm -hmm. Oh, and? Lychee fruit for dessert. All right. He's wondering why we don't grow rice in the jungle. Ah, because it's too much work, Grumbler. You see, rice sprouts have to be transferred one at a time into fields by workers. Then, they flood the fields with water, and after a few months, when the plants bloom, they drain the fields and start picking. That sounds really hard on the back, Grumbler. Mm -hmm. Still want to give it a try? I didn't think so. Me neither. Not every rice field is planted by hand. You can also go rice with farm machinery. Dryer, then taken for milling. Milling means taking the hard outer layer out of the rice, leaving the very nutritious brown rice. But not everyone likes brown rice, so it can go through the mill a second time to make white rice. 
Now it's ready to be packaged and shipped out. It might even show up on your dinner plate. Let's prepare the dessert first. That's a radical idea, but a good one. How are we doing for time? Oh, not bad, but we haven't even started practicing with our chopsticks yet. In that case, we'd better go faster. Mm-hmm. and lychee fruit are easy to peel. They certainly are. Look at that. Hey, it's white inside. It smells good. Mm. And it's sweet, too. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sweet, eh? Sounds like a certain father we know. Is that all there is to it? You bet. Lychees are terrific, just like this. Really? Hmm. But I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to pick one up with these. I know what you mean. A neat way to learn how to use chopsticks is to take an elastic band and tie the fat ends of the chopsticks together. You know, uh, I was in a rubber <laughs> band once. We were pretty snappy. Die. <laughs> you take a sponge and push it up to the elastic. Well, that works just like a spring. Exactly. Now, all you have to do is practice opening and closing the tips. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's try with these, see how we do. This is going to very slowly. I know. Can you believe that quite it? The Chinese word for chopsticks means something fast? Something fast? You must mm -hmm. be kidding. I'm almost ready to <laughs> grab one. Aha! What I do? What I do? No hands. I'm taking a break. Well, that's a good idea. We can practice with the stir fry ingredients later. Okay. Now we're ready to make the sumo stir fry with kung fu rice. We start with raw pork from the supermarket. You can use chicken or tofu if you want. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cut it into thin strips, and when I'm finished, I'll cover it right back up and put it in the fridge to avoid bacteria. Did you say bacteria? Bacteria alert, bacteria alert. All viewers be advised to never leave raw meat out on the counter. Always put it in the fridge, wash your hands with soap, then use a fresh cutting board. Now, we're doing the incredible vegetables. Hey. Why are you chopping them on a slant like that? Oh, it's to make them cook faster. See, for a long time, the Chinese people didn't have a lot of fuel, so they had to make sure their food cooked really quickly. Yeah. If you cut them on an angle like this, it exposes more of the surface area to the heat. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you're chopping everything really thin. I bet that's to help them cook faster, too. You're right. <laughs> oh, Jesse. What? Walk this way. It's a walk. You get it? I got it, Dad. Do you know that walks are shaped like this so that the sides heat up quickly? It helps speed up the cooking time. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. You're a regular walking encyclopedia. Very funny. But seriously, if the walk really does cook things that fast, let's start the rice. That's a good idea. There we go. take to cook? Well, that depends on the type of rice. Let me check it out in the lab, and I'll get back to you. Okay. Today, in the lab, we're going to experiment with three different kinds of rice. Brown rice, white rice, and instant rice. Now, each of these has been cooked for 20 minutes. Let's start with the taste test. <laughs> quite got the hang of these yet. Oh, that's right. Jesse told me that in Oriental etiquette, it's okay to hold the rice bowl right up to your mouth. This'll be easier. Mm. Oh! Oh! Huh. They're like crunchy little pellets. That rice definitely needs to be cooked longer. Let's try the white rice. Good, not bad, but needs a little soy sauce. Mm. 
On to the instant race. like mush. Now that rice definitely didn't need to be cooked that long. Hmm. 20 minutes. Undercooked, perfectly cooked, and overcooked. Let me explain why. Brown rice takes a long time to cook because it still has the bran. The bran is a protective layer, kind of like my lab coat. Now, the white rice takes less time to cook because the bran has been removed as part of the processing. <laughs> No protective layer. <laughs> and now, the instant rice takes even less time to cook because it's been pre-cooked and dried. That is, it's gone through further processing. <laughs> further processing. Uh, just remember, the more processing, the less healthy the rice. And the less dignified the scientist. Excuse me. Do you like wild rice? Did you know it isn't really rice? It's the seed of a wild grass that grows in lakes in Ontario, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. This guy's not just out having a good time, he's harvesting rice. A net on the front of the boat scoops up the rice from the stalks because the rice grows in areas that no car or truck could reach. It has to be taken up by airplane. That makes it more expensive. But some people are wild about it anyway. schedule. We gotta get going on the rice. Rice is an important part of Asian culture. I want to make sure we take it seriously. And I suppose sitting like that makes you think profound thoughts? Actually, yes. He who cooks an amount of rice shall add like amount of water twice. So if I want to cook this much rice, I'm gonna need this much water. That's right. Okay, well, we'll get that going. Turn on the heat, and when it boils, I'll add the rice. No. Add the rice first. I'm getting something. He who adds rice into boiling water insults rice and his daughter. Well, uh, we wouldn't want to do that. So in goes the rice. And we'll just give that a good stir. Not so fast. Not so fast. What? More ancient wisdom? He who stirs rice, unless not really picky, shall be disappointed when it comes out gooey and sticky. I see. Okay, no stirring. You know, you can also cook rice in the microwave, but you have to get an adult's help. That's right. In fact, you should always have an adult's permission to be in the kitchen. Yeah, and never try new food unless a parent says it's okay, because you could be allergic. Mm -hmm. While the rice is cooking, let's go dump some of these scraps. Good idea. Did you know people throw out billions of pairs of chopsticks a year? Wow, that's a lot. Sure is. Let's see if there's something else we can do with ours. Well, one way you can recycle chopsticks is to personalize your own pair and reuse them. Yeah. We got this non-toxic paint at a craft store. You know what I'm going to paint on mine? Hands off. Hands off? Mm-hmm. Look what I did on mine. I guess you could go that way. It's a flower. And there's something you can do with, if you have some other leftover chopsticks. It's called the lame chicken game. That's the chicken who didn't cross the road? No, Dad. It's a game that Chinese kids play. Oh, yeah? How does it work? Well, get some chopsticks and lay them on the ground like this, about a foot apart. And you hop on one foot, 
to the end. There we go. Uh -huh. You take the last chopstick and hop back. Uh -huh. And put it back where you found it. When you get all the chopsticks back here or wherever, you win. But if you touch a chopstick with your foot on your way down or back, you lose. Or if you put both feet down, same thing happens. You lose a turn and lose the game. And unfortunately, start all over again. Oh, Jesse, wait. Your hair's messy. Oh, yeah. That's another thing you can do with chopsticks. There we go. Time to go hopping. Great. You going first? Yep. Oh, you touched when I saw it. I lose your turn. It's my turn. Oh. <laughs> you know, no one's really sure when chopsticks were first used, but we do know that they were invented in China at least as far back as the third century BC. That's 2,300 years ago. Now today, chopsticks are used in Japan, Korea, and Vietnam, as well as China, making them the world's second most popular method of conveying food to the mouth. Now, most chopsticks are made of bamboo or other wood, but they can be made of plastic as well. Oh, and in ancient China, chopsticks were always made of silver for the royal family, because the silver would change color upon contact with certain types of poison. Uh, in Japan, chopsticks can be treated as decorative objects. See, they're usually made of lacquered wood and are sometimes elaborately painted and personalized for their owners. And you know, the Japanese also have special chopstick rests like this for laying down their chopsticks. So don't give up on chopsticks, stick with them. is almost done. Good. Let's get back to walk. Mm -hmm. The thing about using a walk is that it has to be very, very hot, which means you're going to have to stand back a little just to be safe. Did you say safe? We have a safety alert in progress. All viewers be advised that due to extreme temperatures, only adults can operate or stand near a heated walk. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay, Jess. Whoa. You aren't kidding. That's hot. That's right. It's so hot that only certain types of oil can take the heat. I'm using vegetable oil. If I had used a weaker oil, like that olive oil, it would have just melted away. Really? You know what I always say? If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. That's right. Okay, now we're ready to start putting things in, in the order that take the longest to cook. What do you think takes the longest to cook? Um, that's easy, the meat. You are very wise. In goes the pork. Now, I'm going to let that sit till it browns nicely on one side, and then I'll flip it around a bit so both sides get brown. Well, now that the pork is nicely brown, what do you think goes in next? Mm, I'd say the Chinese mushrooms. Ah, uh, you have much to learn. It's actually the red peppers. Cool. I love red peppers. Mmm, they just have such a fresh taste. All right, I'll mix those in. Good. Well, now that we've got those started, we can add the vegetables that take less time to cook. What do we have there? The drained bamboo shoots. Drained bamboo shoots. Yeah. The Chinese mushrooms, which I guessed earlier. Chinese mushrooms. Mm -hmm. The baby corn. Baby corn. Uh, you forgot to. Oh, I miss one. We don't want to waste food around here. That's for sure. And the chopped onions. And the chopped onions. Okay, now okay. just let me mix those up. Okay. Now, here's the beef stock. Oh, be careful. You can't get too close. You better let me do oh, that. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, oh, yeah, you cannot forget the soy sauce. Mm. Wouldn't be a stir-fry without soy sauce, would it? No way. Add in some soy sauce. 
Let me let that simmer a little bit. Oh, this is gonna be great. Here's the cornstarch mix. There you go. Now, the cornstarch mixture is to help thicken the sauce and have the flavor stick to the meat and vegetables. But don't add it all at once because you don't want the sauce to be too thick. I think that's probably about right. Okay. Well, Jess, uh, I think we're pretty much done. Oh, right? But we have to serve this at once, and we still have to clean up. Well, you know what we have to do. On One, your mark, get two, set, go! Yeah, it's cleanup time. What a drag. You wash, I'll dry. Okay. Hey, you! Oh, I'm gonna get you! Muffing, muffing, muffing. This is fun. This is hard work. Wow, super clean. I guess it wasn't so bad. <laughs> we did it. Huh. Hi, everybody. should I take? Oh, no, not again. I thought we were done with that thing. Sorry, Dad. In Oriental etiquette, picking and choosing is a no-no. You just have to go for it, like this. Okay, I get it. Hey, what, what no gun? Didn't you hear that? Dad, you can burp at the table and you can slurp soup and spit up bones. Really? Doesn't matter. Well, in that case, how'd you like to hear me burp the alphabet, huh? Yeah. Um, maybe we should just limit this to accidental burps. <coughs> it was an accident, really. Hey, since you're getting so good with those chopsticks, you might just want to have another look at how to make our sumo stir fry. Cut up the pork or chicken, Get up the old wok, then heat the vegetable oil and brown the meat. And remember, an adult should be the one using the stove for you. Add the red peppers, the bamboo shoots, the Chinese mushrooms, the baby corn, the chopped onions, the beef stock, pour in the soy, and add the cornstarch. That's what thickens the sauce. And there it is. Just get out your chopsticks and get ready to eat. What, it's time to say goodbye already? Gee, oriental cooking sure is fast. See you next time on the Fun, fun Food Frenzy. Food.